Hi everyone, I'm Evert and welcome to my art channel. In this video, I'm doing a watercolor painting of one of my favorite vehicles. It's a Resto Mod 1957 Chevrolet pickup truck. I really like the carefully considered elegance of the angles and curves in the shape, along with the practicality of a utility vehicle. Many modern vehicles have become bland and generic by comparison. As always, the most important part of any realistic artwork is starting from an accurate drawing. For this painting, I'm using Woods & Newton Professional Watercolors on Winter Newton hot press paper. Hot press paper suits automotive art really well because of its smooth surface for fine detail and stability when using very wet washes. I'm also using one of my favorite brushes, a Winsor & Newton Kolinsky Sable Designer's Brush. Designer's brushes have longer hairs than normal watercolor brushes, but retain a perfect point. There are no paid promotions in this video. All the materials are from my personal collection and have been purchased at full price. My experience with one of these comes from when I was a student and my mechanic flatmate owned a bright yellow one that had an engine swap to an extensively modified small block V8. His one was the 1958 GMC Apache variant which had twin headlights. I would tag along when he took her to unofficial car meets and street races on Saturday nights. It was really funny to see guys in M3s react when they were beaten by this massive heavy beast. One weekend, my flatmate was going to take the truck to watch an oval track race in my hometown. He offered me a lift so I could save the bus fare to go visit my parents. Being a poor student, I gladly accepted, and I quite looked forward to the slightly longer trip in the truck. As the weekend approached, he informed me that the plans had changed slightly, and that his girlfriend would be coming along too. Since the truck was only fitted with two bucket seats, if I still wanted a lift, I would have to ride in the back. This was midwinter, but in a subtropical part of the country, so still warm. The trip was only about 100 miles, so the idea of riding in the back didn't bother me much at all. As we were leaving, he mentioned that we needed to do a slight detour to collect a cockatoo that he had bought for his girlfriend. By now, I was really looking forward to the trip, and I had already made plans with my parents, so I had no choice but to go through with it. As it turns out, this slight detour was actually 400 miles in the wrong direction, through one of the coldest parts of the country. I ended up bombing down the highway at 100 miles per hour in sub-zero temperatures, wrapped in a sleeping bag and tucked in behind the cab to try to keep warm for almost 10 hours. This weekend turned into an amazing adventure that I will never forget. I'm grateful that I could share in the experience of this truck and I've wanted one ever since. He sold it soon after this trip, mainly because of the running and maintenance costs. It only did something like two miles per gallon and it needed constant work because he had a lead foot and drove it really hard. I lost contact with my flatmate after I finished studying, but I bumped into him at an oval track race in my hometown a few years later. This time around, he was taking part in the racing. By that time, the truck had changed owners a few more times and was apparently a different color. He still worked on it for the new owners occasionally. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell.
I love the color that this particular one that I've used as reference has been painted. If I was ever lucky enough to own one of these, I would also paint it seafoam green. Thank you for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of the painting and the video or if you have any suggestions for future topics.